Hi everybody, John here with another Well Eternal video. It is uh, April 9th, which means that it is time to get our new pack for the event. So, let's go ahead and see what our deck earned. Um, and we got, we just got a regular rare. Uh, remember, our main deck is Xenon. Ooh, Frenzy Nomnivore, that's going to be good. And our rare is Mirus Nightshade. Ooh, alright. So we have a few more reasons to be Xenon. Uh, primarily with this Extinguish and Frenzy Domnivore, and now Mirus as well. We already have a lot of Night Synergies in the deck already, so Mirus is actually a very nice addition uh, to what is already what I feel like a pretty strong deck. Um, so, you, as you saw in the games, we went 6 and 4. Uh, in our Tiebreaker games, we went 14 and 6. So, a little worse than what we did here, but on average, we're 20 and 10. So, that's pretty good, I would say. Uh, more in line with uh, this record as opposed to this record. Uh, obviously, we've been deranked a little bit because people have added their new packs and uh, went out and played their game. So let's go ahead and uh, adjust uh, what we have in our pool. I think we just want to go ahead and stick to Xenon because that's kind of what we know and what we have already. So I'm not going to necessarily go too ham in uh, trying to rebuild this from scratch. Plus, again, I didn't really see any other, any other big reasons to... Uh, any other big reasons to try to reinvent the wheel, so to speak? Uh, oh, we're definitely playing this Extinguish in our deck. Um, and I th Oh, there's also Repulsive Gorger. Well, let's put the Gorger in the deck, because we, we do have some creatures that would like to die. So we have added four, four cards, and we need to cut a few cards. We're definitely a little bit higher up on the curve, so I don't necessarily want to cut anything too low down. And we got some great Ageless Mentor targets now in like Repulsive Gorger and, and Frenzied Omnivore, so I don't think we're cutting uh, Ageless Mentor. I think that Mirus is better than Unseen Agent, but Unseen Agent in Mirus is definitely kind of a major combo. I don't think we want to shoot at the Sands anymore. It's, it was already a marginal card to begin with in our deck, and losing it doesn't hurt too bad. Um, Viper's Bite is really cute with Lumen Reclaimer, but I think that it's definitely one of our worst cards that we have in the deck. So we have two more cards we need to get rid of. I think, I think, and go with me on this journey, though, it's going to be Premonition Wisp and Xenon Fanatic. Uh, these are our only two Life Force cards. Granted, Premonition Wisp isn't technically Life Force, uh, but we don't have a lot of ways of triggering Life Force to begin with. Like, we had Xenon Augury and Soul Collector dying and Umbran Coaxers. We just didn't have ways of doing it. So I think finally cutting out these... Uh, life Force cards will make the deck a little bit more focused. So here's what the deck looks like now. Uh, I'm thinking pretty happy with what this looks like here. Um, Omnivore and Extinguish were both great hits off of the Dusk Road pack. Uh, Repulsive Gorger is also pretty decent. It's a big, dumb idiot that can sometimes get there, and sometimes you just plague wind your opponent uh, or really make their life miserable. So I don't think there's any other major changes I want to make here. Uh, yeah, no, I think this looks good. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take a little break here, and then um, we will run this through its paces, and you'll see the deck list over here on the right side of the screen. Excuse me. On the right side of your screen, so uh, check, back, check back with y'all yeah, Check back with y'all later. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Well Eternal. Uh, I did do a brief change uh, in between the, the making of the deck and now. I have changed the time, or the Power breakdown to 9 and 9. Uh, this hand is going to be fine. We're going to go ahead and keep this one. If we need to, we can reset our uh, Knight with un with Unseen Agent. So this will be fine. But I did that because I re-looked at the deck. And we actually have a lot of ta or Shadow 2 drops. Um, granted, our, no our amount of uh, time cards, their double time or higher. But I'm not terribly worried about um, not hitting our power drops. Uh, so my those first, for, for two, the first few turns were very simple. Sigil, Sigil, play Unseen Agent. Opponent went with a Seek Power on turn one into a Felon Strange on turn two. Uh, we're currently drawing all of our Shadow Influence, which isn't really where we want to be. Uh, we want to draw at least one other time, but we have a lot of ways of finding it, so... We're going to take our, take our lumps here from this uh, Felon Stranger. 
Opponent follows up with Nocturnal Creeper, keeping the night on. All right, we found our time and Belching Behemoth. Big old Belchy is going to be fine here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play our Tower Top Patrol. There's nothing I want to reset, really, with this Insistent Automaton yet. So we'll play Patrol and say go. This way, if they want to attack with the Creeper, we can just trade with our Agent. Uh, and, if it, and we have a very clean block on the Felon Stranger. Next turn, I think we're going to Zen and Augury. Unless we really, unless I feel the need that we have to play a four or five, uh, we will block. That was pretty easy. I guess I could have like an extract, but they would only have two packs of finding it, so I don't. I was not very afraid of this dying. Maybe I should have been, but I don't know. Ashara. Well, Ashara is problematic. Um, so, because Ashara can become a 7-3 first draw, or quick draw deadly. Alright, so we're going to play our Shadow Sigil, uh, mainly because I want to play this, If I, when I play this Infuser, I want to see if I can get some value off of it immediately. So I guess the question here is, do I play Automaton, Augury, or Sarasar? I think I'm going to play Sarasar, um, only because... I can have a turn where I go automaton pick up unseen agent to make the to keep the night going to make make sure that this guy stays pretty big. Uh, we're not gonna attack. Uh, we could attack for one in here, but I think that we're gonna be ahead in the race for a little bit anyways. Also, don't mind me beating up the crocodile over here. I really do like this totem. This totem's really sweet. The opponent plays a cobalt waystone to give themselves face aegis. We don't really have anything that interacts with them in that regard, so... Our opponent's only attacking with Ashara. We're just going to go ahead and take three here. I'm not too afraid of it. Follow up with Storm Dancer. Alright, so we found Repulsive Gorger, as well as another Unseen Agent. So let's... So now we, have a, we can do a double spell turn where I play something like Augury plus Unseen Agent. But I think I just want to go ahead and get Waste and Infuser down now. See if we can find something on top. And we do not. Alright, so we know the next card is live. And I think we're just going to attack... Well... I think they're going to keep this home for anyway, so we're just going to go and attack for one. And say go here. Thankfully, our Tower Top Patrol will hold the Storm Dancer at bay for a little while. Also, opponent is has been a, is a very I don't know about greedy deck maybe. All right, so now Shara is going to be huge. So this isn't going to die anyways, and I I mean I don't mind taking seven this time, but we do need to find an answer for it soon. And then yeah, we know this Felon Stranger is going to die. So now they play Twilight Hermit, which during night, at the start of your turn at night, it transforms into a 5-3 three, a three Reckless. So we'll play this Shadow Sigil off the top, because we can. So now I guess we have an interesting decision. I think what we're going to do is we're going to attack for one here. And then we're going to get a ye old three for one. Go ahead and plague the opponent. And then say go here. Maybe incentivize them to not attack because we now have a 7-5. Okay, so they're going to attack with Ashar. We will trade with our uh, our Bang Sarasar. We do. Are, we are at a, at a life total disadvantage here. Ooh. Oh, baby. Oh, come to mama. So, so our opponent has a 3-3. Three, three. We have it. We're drawing action next turn, so we're going to attack with our seven four. Cerso's meddling. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Okay, so I think we're gonna just gonna zen an augury. Uh, we'll take Trailmaker. Power on top. No. Uh, and then we'll play Trailmaker, making another time, and saying go. Meddling is particularly annoying because of our Lumen Reclaimer. So now instead of having a Repulsive Gorger, we just have a 2-2. Two -two. 
Like, meddling's not the worst removal spell ever. It's not great. I imagine they were thinking that they were going to try to change our uh, Tower Top Patrol into a uh, into a pig so they can start beating down with their Storm Dancer. Marison, the Eldest. Well, Marison is awkward. All right, well, I got good news, folks. So we're going to play Frenzied Omnivore. And we're going to pitch this Unseen Agent. So now this has Killer. But we drew Extinguish, which means we get to Extinguish Marison. Which buffs the Omnivore. Then we're going to kill the Storm Dancer. Which further buffs the Omnivore. And then I think we just say go. And we're slowly now constricting the opponent's forces. And here, two cards that we didn't have before, Extinguish and Frenzy and Omnivore, really paying off dividends here in this first game. Opponent has an Ancient Bubble, which does nothing, and a Blister Sting Wasp, and a Xenon Cupbearer. Oh my. Our opponent has gone ham. All right, so we draw an Etchings, which, means, which is great, so we play this Time Sigil. So now what do we do? So I think a easy thing that we can do is we can attack with this Omnivore. Either they double block here and here, in which case we kill the 2-4, because the 3-3 three, three doesn't matter. Or they block with the Blister Sting Wasp, which is also fine. Or we can assist an Automaton, pick up the Omnivore, keep its killer, replay it after killer, and then kill something. I don't know which is better. We have too many options available to us. Thankfully, our life total really isn't in danger. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to play Soul Collector and Etchings and Scout off of Etchings. What's on top of our deck? Miris. We'll keep Miris. Oh, actually, there we go. There's a face Aegis thing we can care about. We can use Miris to pop the Aegis. All right, our opponent's going to gain a lot of life off of their silly bobbles. Because the bobbles, they do nothing. Play Oasis Seeker, okay. So let's play... Hmm, okay, so we have 11 power. So we can play Automaton, pick up Omnivore, play Omnivore, kill something, play Miris. That seems pretty good, right? Hmm. Hmm, this is interesting. All right, so let's actually... Hmm. Let's see if we can force our opponent to make a mistake. Let's attack with Trailmaker. See if they want to block. They have a million free blocks. This not only buffs the Omnivore, but it also buffs the Soul Collector, and they didn't. Because our opponent is smart, and that's silly. So we're going to play Automaton to pick up Omnivore. So that we can then replay Omnivore. Uh, we are not going to discard a card, because it already has Killer. We're going to Killer the Cup Bearer. As the most annoying card that they could have. Buffs these two good boys and girls. And then play Miris and say go. Oh god, I can't wait till we draw Striking Snake Formation. Our opponent's not going to know what hit them. Or even Lumen Reclaimer. Lumen Reclaimer right now would be actually insane. And our opponent has like no good blocks or no good attacks. Well, we'll take we'll take one. Dark Wisp. Oh. Time Sigil. Um, so I could Ultimate Mirrors to pop their face Aegis. But that doesn't really do anything. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to attack with some Dorks. Attack with the Dorks. No blocks. Wow, opponent has no fear. Well, let's gain six. Let's Etchings. Ravenous Thorn Beast. I'll keep Thorn Beast on top. And then we'll play Dark Wisps and Sego. Rhyme. Oh, there's a bomb. So you stun each exhausted enemy unit. Alright, so now we... Alright, hold on. Actually... Uh, 
Five. Yes, this works. So let's etchings. Dune Phantom. Not what we want. We do not want a power card. Uh, we're gonna draw. So if I Thorn Beast sack Dark Wisp, we're gonna draw a power card. But it does potentially get us closer to striking Snake Formation, which is really what we want. Because right now our only real out is striking Snake Formation. Hmm. Yeah, I think we have to do that. Draw a card, make a 3-3. Three, three. Alright, we have a power card on top two. Alright, we'll say go. Well, there is a big bomb that, that we didn't know they had before. We can take a few licks from the 7-6, but not too many. Okay. Also, it plays permafrosts. Mmm, another bomb from the opponent. Alright, what's on top of our deck? Alright, there's SSF. SSF is gonna take us to the promised land. Or so we hope. We're also at 10, which is less than... less than amenable. Yeah, I think we have to block this time. Which does hurt our ability to do things. Alright, so we have SSF. So let's scout real quick. Coaxer. Coaxer may be relevant. Alright. I think we kind of have to SSF here. Everybody against Killer. Kill Rhymescale Dragon. It's now a 6-6. Six, six. Kill Seeker. Now becomes a 7-7. Seven, seven. Kill Harrier. Becomes an 8-8. Eight, eight. Kill Tomb Protector. Becomes a 9-9. Nine, nine. Say go. That was a pretty good turn, if I do say so myself. Moonlight Gargoyle, sure. They're thinking about whether they can attack or not, and they are, they should attack with everything. Well, I guess this way they're still alive, or whatever. Play this. I know I'm almost out of cards, but I have a card that gets me out of this. Let's go ahead and etchings. See, there it is. Perfect. Perfect timing. Um, So they're at 15. Oh, we have lethal on board. Yeah, we have 16 on board. So they have to block. Perfect. Play Umbran Coaxer. Um, let's go and pop their face aegis. Um... And unfortunately, I think we're dead now, unless they make a mistake, which they could. Oh, they have Stampede Driver? Okay. Yeah, that is more than enough. Man, Rhymescale Dragon. It is hard to play around Legendaries. Well, we didn't want to start off uh, going 0-1, but... Uh, yeah, well, let's, let's hope we can turn this around in game, in game 2. All right, here we are for game number two. We're currently down a game. I really want to keep this hand, but it has no time in it. So we're going to go ahead and redraw. All right, well, we can't cast anything in our hand yet, but we'll see how our draws cooperate. All right, that's nice. Nice to have, but we still need another power card or so. There we go. All right, so opponent's on Paraxis. Just fire time. Another fire into nothing. Okay. In a late game drawn out, long drawn out game, we should win. Xenon Guardian. Well, 
Unfortunately, opponent, I cannot let you have a Xenon Guardian. That card is going to be too good too often. Especially once you make it an 8 8. No, I can't let you have that. Opponent plays a power and says go. We'll play a power and we'll just play Soul Collector. It's not a super impactful card right now, and I have the feeling that they have like a torch in hand. They could have a Purify, which would make me sad, but. All right. They're going to make a Granite in off of their Granite Monument into a. Ah, they had their own Curator. Which is fine. I don't... Soul Collector is not the reason why we're playing this deck. Oh, what am I doing? Waystone Infuser. Nothing on top. All right. That means we're drawing action, which I like to hear. Maybe they should have considered... Oh, they had a Talir's Intervention? Jesus. Okay. I mean, if they want to silence our Waystone Infuser, of all things, they can do that. Uh, yes, I will trade for your 1-1. I feel not bad at all about that. Opponent's follow-up is nothing. Oh. Oh, honey. Uh, we'll attack for two, because we're not blocking. Into Aether's Mentor. Buff the dudes. I guess I could have also played this Ravenous Thorn Beast, but, you know, value. Yeah, we're going to take five, go to four, or go, not go to four, <laughs> go to 14, excuse me. Follow-up is nothing. We'll play a Sigil. Then we will attack with the team, because they're not blocking. Then we will Curator to silence your 5-5. Five five. There shouldn't be any cards that interact with them favorably here. And then we will Thorn Beast sack the 2-6 to make a 5-5. Five five. Say go. So they had a Talir's Intervention, which is interesting. I still think they have something like a Torch or some other weird card. Or some other fast card, I should say. Emerging Colossus. What do you do? When it hits an enemy player, you draw a card with cost 6 or more from your void and reduce its cost by 6. They don't have any of those. So they just basically have a 7-9. Well, I'm going to play a 9-9 and say go. Like, even if you silence this, and I don't think practice has many ways of dealing with a 9-9. Outside of giving their, like, Colossus Killer or something. I think they're playing this strictly as a 7-9 Overwhelm. So I wonder if they're, think if they're thinking about giving this Killer or something. Oh, the Machete, making it a 9-11. Okay. Into armor, making it a 10 12. Oh no, making a 3 4 flyer. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. No attacks. Man. Our opponent has been very cagey. Which probably suits them just fine. We're going to play our Tower Top Patrol and say go. We get to hold up a Dune Phantom, you know, just in case anything crazy happens. One more power, and we can play our Belching Behemoth. We can put a little bit of a buffer between us and our opponent. Also, I guess this way, when they put the uh, weapon on the Serene Excavator, it can attack into our Archive Curator. Barkeep's Friend. It's a 4-2 weapon. Doesn't really interact with much here. Like, it kills Ageless Mentor, but the, the secret is I want this to die. So they're going to bop Ageless Mentor, and then you get a 1-1 one, one weapon when it dies? Sure. I could save it with Dune Phantom, but that doesn't seem that worthwhile and plus i don't want them to have a barkeep's friend anyways sidearm on the emerging colossus oh so now they have something that they can get back with emerging colossus and barkeep's friend okay i see why they're playing this now if they're thinking about attacking they're probably going to have a bad time um so one card they could have in hand... Well, no. Hoof Slash costs three. So Hoof Slash isn't the card that they have that they're debating between. 
they could have rampage, but even then I can block I can block enough and not die to rampage. Alright. Opponent uh times out of their turn, so we get to go. Baying Sarasar. I do like Baying Sarasar here, so I'm gonna go ahead and play it and say go. Alright, so they have a fast spell that costs two. I'm gonna put them on rampage. That's what I think they have. Another potential option is Synchronized Strike. Um, but I get the I'm getting the distinct feeling that it's that it's a um, that's a rampage. Plus three, plus one, and overwhelm for two and a fire. Fast spell. Once again, the opponent is going to time out, which is not good because if they time out here, I think they just lose the game immediately. All right, we will. So they didn't time out there. We'll start our turn. Drew an Oberyn coaxer. That's nice. Uh, we'll just play our sigil and play the belching behemoth and say go. And nope, they're not out. Of, they're still technically in the game. They're just roping out. It seems. Opponent is still not roped out yet, which is which is still fine. Uh, oh wait, we can just kill them. We can kill them, right? I'm not I'm not being insane. So yeah, we'll just kill them. They have a response window because they have a fast spell in hand, and nothing attacks for exactly seventeen. I'm surprised. I guess they're hitting the OK button with just enough time, but I wonder if they just disconnected or something. Well, we got there. Uh, Cover of Darkness once again, proving its worth of breaking board stalls like this. I do feel bad for our opponent. Like, I think they definitely kind of timed out there, or they had some sort of connection issue, but... We're going to take wins when we can get wins. Uh, on to game three. All right, here we are for round number three. This hand seems okay, I guess. Worst comes to worst, we can play a naked and insistent automaton. We're also on the play, which lets us kind of apply pressure. Hopefully we find another shadow so that we can trick our opponent into what our last opponent did. in silencing our, uh, our soul collector. Finding and extinguish is a very nice thing here. Let's just enter any sort of small units. For example, it can own in a ca it can answer a Oni cave diver. Uh, we don't have anything else, so we're just gonna say go here. And if they do nothing on their turn, I think we're just gonna extinguish it now or extinguish it when we get the chance. Temple Raider. Okay. 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 Well, I could just play this 4-5, but I don't want I don't want this getting out of control. So we're just going to go ahead and extinguish it. Say go. All right. And what does our opponent do with their turn four? Yeah, put a katana on their temple raider, which is fine. Into Spark Hatcher, into Bash. Yep. We draw a Shadow Influence and a Cover of Darkness. So one line available is Frenzy Domnivore, pitch a card, probably this Dune Phantom. Uh, kill the Temple Raider before it gets any bigger if they play something like a Sentinel. Uh, and then we'll just be taking two from the Spark Hatcher. We can also play this Tower Top Patrol, which holds both of these back, but if they play another weapon on the Temple Raider... Then I'm not going to block it anyways. And there are some... There's not a lot of weapons in fire time that buff toughness that much or buff the health that much. But I do think I want to go ahead and get that Tomb Raider... This, um, this Temple Raider off the board. So we're going to play this. Pitch... Pitch... a Hey, hey. Pitch Phantom. And then kill the 4-2. 
which in the void turns this into a or doesn't actually okay i didn't know that but now also when we play when we draw lululemon reclaimer we'll be shuffling back a 4-3 with killer which is not nothing all right ooh perfect play waystone infuser play a time influence and say go all right shields up Opponent plays another Spark Hatcher, but we kind of got Hatchers on lockdown now. Ooh, nice. Especially after that type of turn from their opponent. Well, we've, we'll play this Time Sigil off the top. We have another one on top. Oh my. Uh, I think now we just play this Soul Collector. We're only priced into playing one spell a turn here. But this way, if they decide to get frisky, I have a Soul Collector to block with. Opponent plays Ancient Lore. Super powerful card. Really helps them dig further into their deck, which is really important in, really important in Sealed. We're going to gain some life into nothing. All right. Let's play this Time Sigil. And then I think I'm just going to play Belcher. Put a little bit of a buffer back on and present, present a large wall for our opponent to overcome. Next turn, ooh, Purify on. Okay, that's a little awkward, but whatever. I don't mind that. Into Wandering Forge, into nothing? Gain life? Sure. Ooh, okay. So what my original plan was going to be was attack with Belching Behemoth. See if they decide to trade for it. I don't think they will, but I, that, the plan was to grow Soul Collector. But now, I think what I just want to do is play Automaton, pick up something, and or actually, I'm going to play Patrol... Then play Automaton to pick up Patrol, and then say go. The reason being, a 1-5 doesn't kill her as well as a 6-6 six six does. Opponent's going to gain some life. And the next turn, we're just going to Plague Wind our opponent. Ooh. Ooh, Grenadin, Bellower. And then Striking Snake Formation. Oh, our opponent has a fast spell to respond with. It doesn't matter. All right, so let's kill the th a 3 2. Which buffs all our dudes. They do make a 1 1, but 1 1s don't really matter. We'll then kill the Wandering Forge. All right. Then we will kill. The 3-2, leave you with a 1-1, one, one, and then say go with a 3-6 killer that blocks both of your 1-1s one, very cleanly. Opponent has nothing. All right, so we'll play the Shadow Influence off the top. Uh, let's attack for 7, see what our opponent does. So they're going to chump block. All right. Then we'll play Tower Top Patrol, we'll play Miris, and we'll ult Miris. And so now, whenever they take damage at night, they take two damage instead. And Miris is now a 4-3. Opponent has a Lucky Prospector and a Granite Acolyte. Acolyte's going to put her blade where? I'm assuming on the, the Lucky Prospector. No on herself, okay. Gain some life. Alright, so we we have a we have a non-power card on top, which is nice. I think what we do is we kill her the 3-3. Three, three. Do you have a torch or something? Alright. Then I think we attack with Miris and Belcher. See what they want to do. Rally. Oh my. That is a very aggressive rally, and I love it. I love it. We'll follow up with Dark Wisp and say go, obviously. Now we have a cover of Darkness in hand that our opponent is going to have a hard time answering. Play this Shadow Sigil. Play this Xenon Augury. Uh, I'll take Umbran Coaxer, because Coaxer is better in a race. And also, it's just a 5-2 life, life steal. 
which we'll play and say go. We have... I think we've turned the corner. They'd have to have something really insane that we haven't seen yet. And our opponent says they've seen enough. All right. We haven't has, had as many shenanigans as last as last set of ten, and I really want that to change. So let's let's see if game four can be any better. It's got to be. All right, here we are for round number four. Uh, we are currently two one uh, with the new decks. Uh, we're gonna redraw this hand because this hand is terrible. This hand is better. This repulsive gorger might as well not exist right now, but you know, we do what we must because we can. Also, our influence is basically perfect. In sealed, our sequencing doesn't matter too much in a lot of ways. Um, I mean, it still matters. But, like, all I'm doing on turn two is playing this Grinded and Bellower. There's very little that our component can do to change what that play is. It's unlike, rank it's unlike Ranked or Constructed where, or even Draft, where it's a lot more kind of just prescribed about what you're going to do. Opponent plays a Spark Hatcher. We're again we're just gonna play our Grinded and Bellower and say go. There is I could trade for this here, but I'm not gonna block their two one. Not when I have a one five flyer in hand. Plus we also have Xenon Augury if we want to kind of like refresh, and then eventually if we hit seven we can just repulsive gorger to kill everything. Well Copperall Marshall is annoying, but we're gonna have to let it survive as well. This would have been a great turn for us to have uh, Ageless Mentor. Again, our turn four is just probably going to be playing this Tower Top Patrol. I don't see any reason to augury yet. Plus, we don't really know what we want to augury for. We've already got six power. Uh, we have uh, 11 more left, or 12 more left in the deck. We just want to draw some of our action spells. Our opponent's going to attack for five, and we're not going to block again. Unfortunately, they have effectively pacified our Grinnad and Bellower. Opponent plays a Shadow Sigil into what? So it appears they're Rakano, based on their start, potentially splashing Shadow. Ground Crew. Ground Crew is annoying as well. We're still going to play our Tower Top Patrol. This holds off a bunch of things back now. Plus, they don't have any Valkyrie yet, otherwise Ground Crew can get a little bit, a little bit disgusting. Opponent plays a Shadow Influence into Gun Down. Alright, they, they had an answer. Which was kind of one of the interesting, which is one of my curious points. Um, uh, I think I'm gonna have to block here. I don't want to take 7, going to 11. I get no value off of the Entomb, but it does preserve my life total just a little bit. Uh, we're gonna play this Sigil, and then I'm gonna Augury here. Uh, into Extinguish. Extinguish is exactly what we wanted to find. Putting the Champion of Mystery to the bottom uh, stinks a little bit, uh, but next turn I'm going to be Extinguishing and playing Unseen Agent. Follow up with the Rebel Sharpshooter. Okay, so we find Umbrid Coaxer. So I think what we're going to do is Extinguish Sharpshooter, play Agent, say Go. We're gonna take six, go to f go to four, uh, takes take a night damage, go to three, then play Gorger, which should hopefully stabilize us in the long run. I hope. I mean, we could also just be dead right now, but all right. Well, actually, well, get in for one. Gorger them, say go. Weapon kills us, unfortunately. Um, or they just have slay. Sure thing. All right. Our opponent had a much more aggressive start than we did. And we had to be on the mulligan because we uh, we opened it with one power hand. So sometimes that's kind of how sealed goes. That would be This would be a situation where I think in a best of three, we would beat their deck probably eight times out of ten. Maybe, even, maybe seven times out of ten. But being a best of one, sometimes you draw an aggressive start and sometimes you draw a slower start against the aggressive deck, so. Alright, what are you going to do? So, two and two. Let's go to game five. Alright, here we are for game number five. And, uh, geez, what are these with these unplayable hands? Our deck can do way better than that. Like this. This hand's actually pretty fantastic. 
our opponent's on the play, which is, makes things a little awkward, but, you know, say Livy. We have an interesting decision point. Our opponent plays Emerald Monument. Of whether we want to play Trailmaker or Miris turn 3, or turn 2, I should say. But the big thing is that our deck doesn't have a lot of 3 drops, so playing Trailmaker isn't super impactful. That said, drawing Lumen Reclaimer is interesting. But I think I'm going to need this extra power, so I'm going to play Miris. Say go. And I'm actually fine trading with this Crackshot Fugitive. If they offer the trade. Again, our deck should, in general, beat decks like this. Alright, so they played Orc Record Keeper, which is a very good card. We'll play Trailmaker, make a Shadow, and say go. This this sets us up for Umbra and Coaxer next turn. Unseen Commando. Talk about good cards. Our opponent has some. They're also apparently stuck on, in, on power. Ooh, Gorger's going to be good here in a little bit. We're going to play Coaxer and say go. So now there's an interesting decision if they want to attack with this. Oh, they had Alchemical Blast. Well, that's that's awkward. Well, we're going to take seven here, I think. Yeah, we're just going to take seven, unfortunately. Draw Shadow Influence. All right. So I could Reclaimer, Shuffle our Void, which gets us back a Mirrors and an Umbra and Coaxer. Or, hmm, or I can just Dune Phantom, um, snub the Auric Record Keeper so that we can Repulsive Gorger. I think I like that line. This way also we can get extra value off of Lumen Reclaimer. Yep. Ambush, block the 4-4, preserve our life total a little bit. One has a Bold Adventurer. We don't find a power card, but we find Champion of Mystery, which I would say sufficiently locks down this board. Sure, they can attack for three, but we have a flying blocker to block with it. They would need something like a Vanquish at this low of uh, influence or this low of power. And sometimes, you know, your six power seven sevens or glorified towering Terrazons are pretty good and sealed. Now they could attack here. To maybe give their Unseen Commando plus one plus one. But I don't know how that's going to work for them in the long run. I think our opponent is kind of currently mulling over their options, trying to figure out what their best line of play is. Like, there's a lot of pump spells that they could have available to them in, in Combray. Like, if they have a stand together, they're going to put it in their deck. If they have a Finest Hour, they probably should play it in their deck. But we'll see. Our opponent has gotten the rope. All right, we drew Shadow Sigil. That's good. So I think my line is just going to be Gorger, Sacrifice the Trailmaker, Nuke your team, and say go. And that, yeah, say go. So now all their dudes are very, very small. Well, not very small. They still have a 3-3. Three, three. But their 3-3 three, three doesn't... Okay, then they pass. Okay, that's fine. Let's play... Okay, here's an interesting decision. So I can attack. And then play Dark Wisp and Lumen, Lumen Reclaimer. And depending on how they block, certain things could happen. So yeah, let's attack for... Let's attack for 7... Or for 14. Alright, that was the block I kind of expected them to make. Then they take seven. Unfortunately, nothing special happens. <laughs> I mean, they, they, he, your Unseen Commando becomes a 2-3 again. Uh, let's play Dark Wisp, and then we'll Lumen Reclaimer our Void back. And then we'll say Go. And we still have our cover of Darkness, in case our opponent finds another board stall. And we're still going to block this, of course. We're actually one away from our <laughs> our champion of mystery to being unblockable. Just in general. I would much rather it it draw me a card every turn, but you know. I'll take just straight up unblockable. Alright, we'll block again. Opponent finds I oh they they're they're trying to find Ironclad Oath. Okay. That's pretty good for them. Alright. Alright, so now now champion is just straight up unblockable. 
We have 11 power in play, or 12 power in play, actually. Our opponent can attack for... Can attack for 3, go to 13. We find Frenzied Omnivore. Oh boy, okay. So they're guaranteed to take 7. Alright, Hall, so if I cover of darkness, they take 7, they take 12, and then they take 1 from the night damage, right? Okay, yeah, so that's, uh... That is good game's opponent. Thank you for playing. Whew, all right. Three and two with the new deck. Um, I'm going to put the next five games into another video, but we'll see you uh, in the next set of five. Hope, let's see if we go 5-0 to finish off eight and two.